Welcome. This is Damon Brown of the Bring Your Worst Show. I come to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 11.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, Vegas time, bringing you the best for uh, side hustlers, for solopreneurs, for people who are uh, what I call the non-traditional entrepreneurs. People who are trying to create amazing stuff from nothing. Um, I can relate to that. I actually had my first startup. At the same time, I became primary caregiver of my first child. My first child is now eight and a half. <laughs> so <laughs> he's already started to talk back and everything. So he is grown and kind of eight going on 40. And so in the process of me doing my two startups, the second one became very popular. It's called Cuddler. It connects people for hugs. You might have heard of it. It would have been 2014, 2015. It got really popular with uh, about a quarter million active users. And we ended up selling it. Um, about a year after uh, we started it, me and my two co-founders, we bootstrapped it, which meant we used our own money. And this was right around the time that my son was turning two. In fact, it was just after his second birthday. And so now I've been dedicating the uh, my career so far over the last eight, nine years to, I guess, five, six years, who's counting, to uh, help people like yourself to get to the next level and uh, and do cool stuff. And the Bring Your Work Show comes to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, like I said, at 11.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, Vegas time. You can subscribe for free. It's always going to be free. Uh, might have some advertisements in the future. We'll see what happens. But I always like to support y'all as much as possible. Um, I have my um, own coaching practice. I've had a private coaching practice for several years now. And it's relatively high end. Maybe not for coaching, but, you know, compared to like buying a book. And one of the things I've been trying to do over the years is make it as accessible to people as possible. So if you want to do stuff for free, you can go and rock with the channel, subscribe for free, help support my business, helps get the word out to other people who might be on YouTube or on other channels and get their thing going. Shout out to all of you all on Amazon Live as well. So I always welcome you all coming through as well as on LinkedIn. Go and subscribe, particularly on YouTube, and that gives good feedback to me, adds some traction, as we call it in the publishing world, <laughs> as well as in the um, startup world. And it helps me know if this is impacting you in a good way with the, the programming that I'm doing. I think this is 162nd episode and only been doing it for, uh, man, 10 months. So yeah, happy Halloween to me. We are rolling. Speaking of Halloween and the seasons and the new year coming up, Career Remix, my next book, my 26th book, believe it or not. Career Remix, get the gig you want based on the skills you've got. Um, the main thing with that is me helping you understand what your next level is and where you can go as we talk about this uh, this great resignation, as people like to say, particularly the Wall Street Journal. I'm looking at you. <laughs> and it's an awesome time and an interesting time to frankly, to be alive and to see where things are going to go from here. Speaking of that, I am going to slam something in here because I am excited. I totally forgot to put it in the, uh, in the chat, but I am geeked about it. The trailer for Career Remix is coming out tomorrow. So tomorrow at 11.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, again, as you're watching right now, but 24 hours from now, on the YouTube channel exclusively, uh, I have the trailer for the new book, Career Remix, get the gig you want based on the skills you've got. It's going live tomorrow. I am happy. It's about a minute and a half long, super short, but it'll let you know exactly what's happening. Come through the, to the premiere. I think you're going to be really excited about it. As you can tell, I am. <laughs> I worked really hard on the trailer, and it was a fun, fun process to do that. Shout out to Sterling Publishing, as well as their uh, as their uh umbrella Barnes and Noble publishing for giving the support and giving the push behind the book. As many of you know, I've had my own publishing uh, imprint for about 10 years now. So to do a cool partnership with Barnes and Noble and specifically with Sterling publishing is great. So the trailer goes live tomorrow. In fact, let me go ahead and set it up for you, for y'all. So make sure it's clear. Query or remix, put trailer. And that is Thursday, 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 Thursday. 11.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. I have been geeked about it all week. I can't believe I forgot to actually include it in there. So it's in the links now. Yeah, a lot of stuff going on. When you're launching a book, you know, you got to take care of your business. Career rem Remix, though. Trailer is going to be coming live tomorrow, 11.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you subscribe, it'll be free, and you'll get a notification when it goes live. If you want to catch it later, go and subscribe, and then it'll be in your queue on YouTube. Either way, you'll, you'll be able to catch a trailer tomorrow. And shout out to all y'all who have uh, supported me so far. 
the book Career Remix, though, you'll see it on Amazon Live if you're on there. And then you'll see it in the links below if you're watching it on LinkedIn, watch catching me on Twitter. If uh, you're catching me on YouTube, any other platform, you'll see the link right below. You can go ahead and pre-order it, which helps things. It'll be out January, mid-January. You're looking at January 11th or January 18th of 2022. I get way more into it, into the trailer, even though the trailer's short. So check out the trailer if you want to learn more about it. Again, the trailer's live in 24 hours. It's getting real, y'all. There's always this moment, which I talk about in the newsletter at uh, joindamon.me. I have a free newsletter that comes out every Jan- every every January. <laughs> Only books come out in January. Every Wednesday at 5.55 a.m. I talked about that in the newsletter where you have this uh, liminal period between getting something started and then it actually finishing. And I'm in that period right now, which is a little nerve wracking, but very exciting where you, it's kind of like your um, mentor called it kind of like going up the roller coaster and you hear the little clicks, you know, so you already paid for your ticket. You already stood in line. You're already in, you're strapped in. You're not getting out, right? <laughs> I know y'all have felt that before where you had some doubts. You're like, oh, well, I'm already strapped in. And then you hear the clicks and, you, and you're not there yet, but you know, it's going to happen. That's what it's like launching everything from a new startup product to um, coaching with one of y'all for the first time. I've coached hundreds of folks. I still get jitters for that first coaching meeting, you know, uh, which I think is a good thing. Uh, First time I speak to an audience, I've done four TED Talks. They're all available at the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Brown Damon. I still get that feeling like right here, right above the top, the top of my stomach, every single one. If you see one of my TED Talks, no, five minutes before, <laughs> I almost did, almost did a Willie Beeman <laughs> on the floor. <laughs> if you watch any given, given Sunday, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But that queasiness is part of the process. And you learn to love it. And you understand that that's reflective of you actually caring about it. I care about Career Remix. I can't wait for y'all to ch- catch, it, catch the trailer tomorrow. <laughs> Stuttering over myself. Catch the trailer tomorrow. And then also to, to uh, pre-order the book, get it going, start your new year right, particularly if you're trying to do a career pivot or like many of us trying to get our career to the next level. Uh, speaking of books, man, Brian Terry is killing it. Shout out to Brian. Black Food, still on the bestsellers list, plural, like I said last week, came out a week ago. It's doing really well. I have a short essay in there about black male vulnerability, which I know quite a bit about personally, as well as through my coaching and other things that, that I've researched in my life. It is a fantastic book. It's filled with recipes. And then it's also essays like mine that talk about the black experience or more specifically the African diaspora around the world. Killer stuff. If you've watched High on the Hog, which is one of my favorite things on Netflix, before I canceled them because of the because of Dave Chappelle stuff. That's another story. <laughs> but before I canceled Netflix, they were like, that was like my favorite show on Netflix. Went through the whole series in a in, in a in a in a gif. Um and other stuff. Michael Twitty, who I met met through Ted several years ago. Shout out to Michael and his book Rice, as well as his previous book, The Cooking Gene. He's featured in that. Like it's just heavy hitters. And I'm humble to just be involved with them at all. Uh, you can still order it. You can order it through the link right here. If you're on Amazon Live, just click on the side and then buy it through Amazon and get it going. All right. Speaking of getting going, we have a lot of stuff we're going to cover today. I'm excited. We're talking about having hard conversations. This is normal. Uh, this is normal. I And having hard conversations doesn't just mean you want to break up with someone, you know, or, or whatever. Like, it doesn't have to be that dramatic. But like, even like over the last few few days, like I've had really hard conversations with other people and the other people have hard, hard conversations with me. You know, I just got some really bad personal news over the past week. You know who you are. I hope you're doing all right. You know, and it's that thing where it's like that conversation needs to happen. And then it could be something that's a little bit lighter where it's like, like I dealt with recently where my kid really wanted some type of food and that food wasn't in the house. It's not that we're lacking. It's just we didn't have that particular food. It sounds really benign. But to a kid, it's just like, oh, my God, I can't have chicken tenders. Oh, my God, it's the end of the world. And if you're a parent or a guardian, you have nieces and nephews, if you've been in that situation at all, even if you're a grandparent or whatever, you know that feeling. So we always have difficult conversations. They could be really big or they can be relatively benign. 
particularly in the, in the business world. Like I said, my last startup it was called Cuddler, which connected people for hugs. But when it got really popular, we ended up selling it. it remember, it's we. So it was me and my two co-founders. We had conflicts all the time <laughs> until we saw that. We even had conflicts after we saw that. But that's just kind of how it works because there's different power dynamics. There's different things that people want, different communication styles. I was just talking to my partner about it, my, my life partner, my wife about it over the last couple of days. So, so we've been together for a while, but we still talk about how we talk and our, our styles are so different. But that's the case for everybody from my best friends to my, my partner, to my business partner, to even my kids. Like everyone has a different style. So what I want to highlight today are a few books that at least personally for me have helped me get straight as far as communication. And I think it's even tougher for me because I have two degrees in journalism, masters of magazine publishing from at the time, the number one journal school in America, Northwestern, according to US News and World Report. So one of those guys. So it was like supposed to be the cream of the crop. And even I'm having a hard time communicating, right? So that kind of makes it even more, even harder. It's crushing on the ego. If you're in a similar situation, if you have a background in journalism like me, if you're used to communicating at work, if you're used to being a clear communicator, if people come to you for, to clarify what they're thinking and you help them communicate it, it's even more important that you listen to what I'm talking about today because we're more than likely to have a harder time realizing that we have a hard time communicating, right? It's almost like a personal blow. And I found that people that usually have a tough time communicating are more open to learning about communication. People like myself who are supposed to be professional communicators as in getting paid to communicate, we can sometimes be um, a little bit tougher to get through. So hopefully if you're having a tough time with conversations and you're supposed to be a professional communicator, you ain't, you ain't the only one. I said that on purpose. I, I do know it's not good English. So let's talk about some really good books, really good books. That, uh, that might help you on your way. The first one I would recommend is Crucial Conversations. It's by four different authors, so you know it's a collaborative effort. Um, it's something that, um, shout out to Bernadette Johnson who exposed me to the book. I appreciate you, excellent consultant. It was one of those books where I didn't read it all the way through. If anything, it ended up being a reference, and I have the digital version. Unfortunately, I don't have the physical version. But if you're on Amazon Live, you can see it right on the link, or you can ch check the links below. If you're on another platform, and check out the book. I didn't realize it. It sold like 5 million copies, 4 million copies. But um, I heard about the book about, again, through Bernard Johnson about 15 years ago. And I think it might have came out like 20 years ago, 25 years ago. And it is a great reference to talk about conflict and how to deal with it. Because the thing is, and yeah, if you're familiar with my work at all, my previous books like Build From Now and all, and all that, I've talked about this where the things that aren't dealt with, they tend to fester. Now that idea isn't original for me. <laughs> Probably started with Sigmund Freud or even, even further than that. It feels like more like a Carl Jung idea, but they tend to fester in the dark. What Carl Jung would call our shadow. That's the case with even bigger dynamics like groups. Now, I've never led a group as far as a big corporate environment. Cuddler, which was my biggest company, it was myself, my two co-founders, and we had some consultants. So, um, so you know, if you are familiar with that territory, you would know much better than me. I, you know, I respect where my expertise is not. That's not my expertise. But what I do know about what I can speak to is, again, leading something from nothing. So creating something from scratch and then organizing people in a certain way. I'm familiar with that process. Even the book process is like that. Even if you make music, like my, my good friend, uh, Purple Fluorite does, who does the, the theme song for Bring Your Worth, you can see the link below. Like, like to, to create things and to create almost like a movement behind it that requires having difficult conversations. The music you have right now is fine, but I have this new music over here. And this new music might make you feel uncomfortable. So here you go, you know, and eventually maybe you'll pay me for it and then you'll become a fan. You know, this new book built from now, my, my book that just came out uh, um, at the top of the year, you know, this, we know you have a bunch of books on your shelf, but this new book that costs $25, this is what's going to change your life. We always have those conflicts. We just don't look at it as conflicts. We look at it as selling, we look at it as marketing, we look at it as, trying to persuade someone, but it's persuasion, but getting someone to go from this place to another place 
or at least to consider a different side. That's what the book is about. And again, it's a great reference. Um, me personally, it's not a book where I sit there and say, I'm going to read this from, from, back to, from, from, from cover to cover, as they say. It's never been that book for me. It's been something that, again, I have the digital version where it's like, I'll pull it out and I'll be like, oh, okay, let me think about this. Let me think about that. Great starting point for this conversation, <laughs> crucial conversations. So shout out to the authors. I'm not even going to go through all of them. They're all listed right there. I always get tongue tied when I go through all four authors, but shout out to all of them. We appreciate your work over the last two decades. <clears throat> if you want a good, a good pairing for this, then I have a show that I think this episode ran about a month ago and I got really good feedback, not so much from, um, YouTube and the general audience, not like it was bad feedback, but not so much from them. But I, I shared this with a lot of the networks that I'm in, you know, as I call them like back channels, or I texted this video to a few folks and it really resonated with the networks that I work with, like a lot. And it's about how to build a good partnership. I'm familiar with that. Um, my traditionally published books, which are over here, over here, it's like a mirror on here. So forgive me, I'm still getting used to it. All my traditionally published books are right here. About half of them are co-authorships. So I'm really used to partnerships. Again, my last major startup was myself and two other people. So forget like one other person, try two other people. And suddenly, yeah, this trifecta uh, of dynamics of um, power and communication styles and discussions and, and dynamics that you have to navigate. And I talk about this in depth in this video, like all my uh, episodes of, <clears throat> excuse me, like all my episodes of Bring Your Worst Show. I think this one's like 15 minutes long. So super short, shorter than the amount of time I've been talking. And you'll get hopefully all this information from my own experience with my successful partnerships and even sharing some stuff about my partnerships that didn't go so well. I talk about my partnerships more in Career Remix. Again, the book that's coming out uh, in January. I'll highlight it for you over on Amazon Live. It'll be out uh, mid-January. And again, the trailer will be premiering on this channel at youtube.com slash Brown Damon exactly 24 hours from now. So super excited about that. Anyway, check out this video and I think it'll be a good pairing to the Crucial Conversations conversation. The next one is from Brene Brown, Rising Strong. As I always say, I'm a big Brene Brown fan. Uh, I lear I've learned so much about EQ and emotional intelligence from her. This one is matters, and it actually ties to um, one of my most popular episodes on the Bring Your Worth channel, again, the channel you're watching, is it's so much good stuff in there as far as, number one, getting over yourself. So not assuming that you have the best viewpoint of everything, which is part of having hard conversations. Um, again, I've had some tough conversations over the last week or two, even as recent as this morning. And I've had to chill myself out and be like, wait a second, like, this is this other person's viewpoint. So I might be right, quote unquote, but I'm right based on my viewpoint. They don't have my viewpoint. So I'm going to have to relax. Rising Strong talks about this. The premise of the book is much bigger, but, but I'm recommending because there's a few key chapters in there. Um, I will recommend a video in a second that will actually elaborate on this a little bit more. Anyway, it's my favorite book from Brene Brown. If you're a fan of hers and you don't have this in the, in the collection, please get it. Like, I think it's her, it's her best book. Um, I did not read Dare to Lead yet. Um, and that's the one that's about leadership that came out, um, I want to say about six months ago. I've been pretty busy writing my own books, so I haven't had a chance to read it. All right, that's very good. But Rising Strong, though, is like the creme de la creme for me. Um, excellent. You need it. In, you need it in, in your catalog, particularly again, if you're having a lot of difficult conversations, again, with a spouse, with your kids, with a business partner, even just with your supervisor and working through the hierarchy at work, you know, this is a good discussion. Excuse me. The video that I recommend pairing with rising strong actually features a quote from rising strong. And it's like, how can I accept others for who they are? This is my most popular video of all of them for the past year, like by far, as you'll see. I might as well be upfront about it because if you're gonna click on it, you're gonna see how many views it's gotten. And I think part of it is because of uh, not even like it was early on, so not even because it looks good or <laughs> my skill set. I don't know if you've ever seen um, Simon Sinek's um, first TED talk, which ended up being the origin of his massively bestseller book, 
starts start from Y. But it looks like it was done like it was actually done in Puget Sound, I want to say so, up in southern Canada, up in southern Canada. And it looks like it was made like, <laughs> like, like at a rotary club or something. But the stuff he's talking about is powerful. This video is similar. I don't know how powerful what I'm talking about is. It's powerful to me. I don't know if it's powerful to you, but you know, the quality is just like is one of my first episodes, but it really took off. And I think one of the reasons why it resonates so much with folks is because I think we want to get along with other people. As much as we fight and we argue and all that, we want to get along with other people. We want to understand, and that comes down to understanding where other people are coming from. How can I accept this person for who they are, even though what they do is against who I am? Now, I'm not talking about people who actually actively hate who you are. We're not talking about that. That's a different discussion. I talk about that in Build From Now. There are limitations to that. What I'm talking about is just something a little bit more, again, benign, like a coworker who you don't see eye to eye with. How can you understand them and see them for who they are, accept them for who they are, while simultaneously respecting who you are? This video talks about that. It's a ridiculously short video. It's like seven minutes long. Um, but it's resonating with a lot of you out there Again, the views are pretty crazy, at least based on the numbers from my channel. So I know it's resonated with a lot of people that I've never met before either, which, as you can tell, means a lot to me. But it's a really good pairing for Rising Strong. If you're not able to grab Rising Strong right now, go and check out the video. And I talk about this massive, amazing quote from Rising Strong. And I'll give you a glimpse as far as why I recommend it if you're having a difficult time with conversations right now, which, frankly, we all are. Next recommendation, The Daily Stoic by um, Ryan Holiday and Steve Hanselman. Shout out to them. I appreciated this book. It actually came to me around the time that I was doing my first startup called So Quotable. And again, primary caregiver of my wife and I's first kid. He was four months old at the time. And I was trying to get through the day. And I talk about that quite a bit more in... Um, the Ultimate Bites is Entrepreneur from a few years ago. You got a bestseller from way back. Thank you all for the support back in 2016, 2017. I talk about that a lot more, and I talk about it very briefly in my recent one, Build From Now, which came out, again, at the top of the year. All those are available at damebrown.net if you want signed copies or you can get it at your favorite, uh, favorite bookstore. Um, but I talk about how I was striving to find some type of balance when all these other things were pulling at me. To be frank, I've felt a lot of those feelings recently over the past year and a half because, you know, excuse me, it's my partner and I, and then we have two little kids. It's been hard, really hard. Where do you find yourself within that? And if you know yourself, which I'm fortunate to know myself like really well, if you know yourself, then how do you nourish yourself so that you can get to you to be yourself? Because sometimes people are like, well, I'm raising my kids. I don't know. And now my kids are getting older. I don't know who I am. That's difficult. I coach some folks that are in that position or have been in that position. So shout out to y'all. That sounds really difficult. I would argue that it's equally difficult, maybe even harder when you already know yourself super well. And I know myself fairly well. I know what I need. I know what kind of life I want to live. All those things, which is, again, one of the things I, that I help um, coach people on. But then what happens if those resources aren't there, right? Travel is a big part of who I am. It always has been since I was born. It's been a difficult couple of years. <laughs> I think I've left the house like six times. You know, it's like, like really left the house, like gone somewhere. Um, and then the safety precautions and all those things because I care about, care about the fellow man and woman. And so... Yeah, so how do you balance things out? And then that's one of many, many, many other things. The Daily Stoic really was helpful as far as when it comes to crucial conversations and talking to other people, you have to have, pardon my French, you have to have your shit centered first. You have to have your shit centered first. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to communicate effectively with other people. That's one of the reasons I would argue, at least for me personally, I can't speak for you. The last couple of years have been so hard because I'm used to communicating fairly well with my partner and communicating empathetically with my kids. But it's been really hard to be centered because those things, and travel is just one of those things, 
those things that usually keep me balanced or help me feel like myself are gone right now or in such short supply that they're not really feeding me. So if you're having a hard time with certain conversations, or more importantly, this is a better way to put it, if you're about to have difficult conversations, if you're about to ask a supervisor for a raise, um, if you're about to break up with a partner, um, if you're about to talk to your kids or a loved one about a difficult topic, The Daily Stoic talks about getting yourself right first. And sometimes we have hard conversations that become nearly impossible because we're not centered. In other words, the conversation is going to be hard no matter what, right? I heard about a death recently with, that made me very sad. That was a hard conversation no matter what. <laughs> like, <laughs> There's no easy way to have that conversation. But if you want to have an impossible conversation, then make sure you're not centered when you have that conversation. <laughs> then it's really hard, as in it could be impossible. And so this book is really good as far as essentially, and I talk about this in the bad par partnership video that I recommended again in the, um, you can click, up, click below in the comments after, the, after the, this video is done, where the hardest thing about bad partnerships is that we actually chose that partner. There was a certain point when we signed on the dotted line, proverbially, like with, with a handshake or literally, as in a contract, as in getting married, as in taking a job. And until we actually own our part in that hard conversation and that decision, then we're not going to be able to get the accountability of everyone because we haven't gotten our own accountability in it. And that's the hardest part. Uh, the Brene Brown video that I re recommended that, like I said, is my most popular video talks about that. Um, the Bad Partnership one talks about that. The Daily Stoic is all in that. So if you're going to have that conversation, find ways to center yourself. The Daily Stoic, Stoic is excellent for that. It is daily, so it's 366 days. Each each one is like excerpt, kind of excerpt. I used to call it a chapter. is about two minutes long, and I love the audiobook of it. So I've linked to the audiobook. You can also get the physical book, which is super small book, but it actually uh, helped. Um, oh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Inspire, <laughs> man. Long Wednesday it helped inspire. <laughs> Inspire my own bestseller, <laughs> The Bites, Alton Bites as Entrepreneur, which came out a few years after Daily Stoic. So shout out to, to Ryan and, and Stefan. Y'all inspired me as well. But I love the book. I link to the audiobook on there. And of course, if you're uh, on Amazon Live, you can catch it right on there. Um, a good pairing to that on the show would be how to organize your life right now. And I talk about a principle from uh, Stephanie A. Covey. He either goes by Stephen or Stefan. I think it's Stephan A. Covey. Uh, rest in peace to him. He died about a decade and a half ago before I got into coaching, before I even had my startups. So he was doing his thing well before I was doing any of mine. But I talk about a famous philosophy of his and how you can apply it to your life. It works really well as far as if you're trying to find balance. Last recommendation would be, oh, and I do have it here, would be Data Story by uh, Nancy Duarte. Duarte. Shout out to Nancy. I've seen her speak at TED many, many years ago. It might've been my first TED or something, like 10 years ago or something. Um, but she's is a TED affiliate. She's been rocking on there. So you can check out her talks over at TED.com. I think they're pretty darn popular. But she has a book called Data Story. I think it came out, I want to say two, three years ago. I interviewed her for Inc. Magazine. I have a column with Inc. over at IncDamonBrown.com. Feel free to check it out. There's 600 columns on there. So you know, read yourself silly if you like. But it's over the past six years I've been writing writing for Inc. But we had a really good conversation about it. Data Story, I recommend this book because it's about communication. You see the dog ears, like this book is not a joke. And you see like the union or what we call a Venn diagram, right? In the business, I think that's what they call it. But it's a beautiful looking book that talks about how you can use data to actually have um, a foundation to your conversations. So I'll give a really, really simple example of this. She has other books, but this is my favorite of hers. I'll give a really quick example of this. Let's say I say, all right, so, so this, this holiday, we're not going to be able to go on this trip. That sounds disappointing, right? If that's, particularly if I'm talking to, again, I have two little kids. But if I end up saying, Look, 
there's a pandemic happening right now. And for every extra day or so, we're actually able to stay at home, the sooner we'll be able to have something that seems closer to the normal life that we had the summer before last or the winter before last. And the more we're able to do this kind of thing and encourage other people to do that, the closer we'll be able to have, the sooner we'll be able to have time with the little cousins and other folks that you love. So maybe we can sacrifice a little bit now to do it later. And then to give them data points or to say, hey, these particular numbers, these numbers are going down, but it's going down because we're taking responsibility for this. A little bit convoluted, not a good example for, <laughs> sorry, Nancy, because she's really good with the data, but she does an even better job than me because that is not my expertise, obviously. I'm pretty good at parenting. Numbers, uh, not so much. But what Nancy's basically saying is that there's ways that you can use data to help your argument. Not argument as far as fistfight argument, but argument as far as saying, having someone understand your point of view. And <clears throat> when I talk about conversations, when I talk about arguments, that's all I'm trying to say. Help other people understand your point of view and help you understand another person's point of view. That's it. At the end of the day, how hard can a conversation be if you both understand your POV? As soon as you get that, then the conversations get a lot softer. A good pairing for this would be, which is way more my expertise. You tell I'm out of my depth when it comes to, Nancy's an expert on this. What's something that's, that I know a lot more about is closing deals and connecting with other people. I'm not crazy about the term closing the deal, which sounds very um, Gordon Gecko, um, Glen Gary, Glen Ro Ross, you know, which Wall Street and Glen Gary, Glen, Glen Ross, both excellent movies. Don't be afraid of the, Abundance of testosterone in them. They are fascinating character studies in both of them. But the reason why I named it that is so many people that I know who are more in the sales category or who are a little bit more, frankly, aggro about it, they're going to under only understand those terms. The way I would rather put it is how can you connect with a customer? What are the ways that we turn away customers or people that we want to serve? Unfortunately, you can't quite fit that into the title. So it's a little bit softer than what I'm selling it to be. The reason why it's a good pairing for this is it talks about the ways that we turn away the people that we want to serve. We're at a half an hour. I could talk a whole another half an hour about this. I have keynotes where I talk about this. Again, all for free at youtube.com slash Brown Damon. So come through, subscribe. It's a buffet. I think I have like 48 hours worth of content on there. So you can literally watch for days if you want. But I have keynotes where I talk about this, where we say that we want to serve certain people. But then when those people show up, we have a certain way of pushing them away. Sorry for the big hand there. <laughs> pushing them away. This video talks about that. Again, 10 minute video, super short. Please check it out. I think you'd appreciate it, particularly if you're struggling again with these crucial conversations. And these crucial conversations could be you getting your first sale. Remember, even for me, there was my first TED Talk. There was my first book that I wrote and published. There was my first coaching customer. There was my first person that subscribed to this YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Brown Damon. Like there's always that first one. That's what I talk about. And if you don't handle things in a certain way and honor people that want to be served by you, then you're going to turn them away and then you won't have the success that you deserve nor will you be able to serve the people that you say that you want to serve. Enough on that. I am loquacious today. My favorite word of the week. We're 33 minutes in. I try to keep it at 30 minutes, but I'm going. <laughs> Career Remix. It is out in January, mid-January. Go ahead and you go to mycareerremix.com. They'll take you to my website. You'll find all the links. You can also get it at your favorite, your favorite bookstore. All of them got it now, which is super exciting. The trailer to Career Remix, the book trailer, official, exclusive on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Brown Damon. It's premiering tomorrow, 24 hours from now, 1130 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, Vegas time. And I'm excited and I can't wait for y'all to see it. The Bring Your Show, otherwise, every Monday, Wednesday and Friday, 1130 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And you can subscribe for free at any time. It's an exciting time. It's a good time to get involved. Anyway, good luck with your hard conversations. You can wish me luck on mine. <laughs> Much love to y'all. Remember that you can always bring your worth and that you can always build from now. Take care.